or we want to wait to get this a little more solid? Uh, no, we'll be doing... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do we want to firm this up a little? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm See, sorry. It, it's the natural thing to do. Okay, I'm I got sorry. a question for you. I can't tell you any details on the show because... Okay, that's uh, fine. Doing this is what I want to do first. First. I want yeah. to give you an official introduction again because my recording gear, uh, and this will be this will be broadcast on uh, YouTube again uh, in about three hours, and we'll have a lot of people listen to it there as well. So let me give you a formal introduction, uh, introduction again as... Uh, uh, you know, I'm sorry for the guys listening live. I, it, I'll make it brief. Here we go. Uh, Hillary Ramo, Ramo, welcome back to the program. I'm excited you're back. I look forward to getting you on here on a regular basis again. What is on your mind tonight? You just told me you had a question for me. What is your question? My question is, what is the major sex religion that most of the world right now worships? Um, can you be a little more specific on the question? No, 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 no. You can be sex specific. religion? Yeah. What kind of, what is the major, what would you consider... And maybe some of the listeners in the chat room could answer this, too. What would you consider the major sex religion that the majority of the masses on this world worship? Um, I, I guess I don't know how to answer it because I, I'm, I don't, you say sex religion, and I don't know, I mean, you know, the, the most uh, prolific religion I would say right now on this planet is Muslims. They, they, but, they have, on average, more children than any other Religion? Am I getting the qu question wrong? Am I understanding yes. it wrong? Okay. Yes. Who's porn. doing it more? Is what I'm thinking. The answer. The answer is porn. The answer is the triple X business. Oh. The answer is porn. So, but the most. The, and on, let's be honest. I mean, that's just a huge multi multi billion dollar industry. It's all over the world. Uh, if people say they're not doing it, they most likely are doing it. It's one of the most common. Uh, states of understanding our sexuality is by relating it to porn. And if you look at the relationship of the sexual energy, and I'm going to go kind of fast here, so for those of you who are just kind of tapping in here, you can go to my blog and you can read the full article that I wrote based on uh, the Vagegate. But before I get any further, I probably should explain that since you did such a great intro that the YouTube people won't hear, but uh, everybody else has been hearing it. Project Vagegate is something that I've actually founded. <laughs> Doesn't that sound silly? Uh, it's not a conspiracy. Uh, well, it kind of is if you think about the background of it. Um, but Project Badgegate is about uh, coming back and really reclaiming the divine vagina. Coming back and saying, okay, these relationships between men and women that conceive life, and I'm going to use the example of a relationship between a man and a woman. So for everybody else who may have uh, same-sex partners or, you know, I've gotten a lot of emails about that. How does that work? It's, it's different, but I'm just going to stick to one sense of a relationship just for clarification purposes. So I can get into this and talk about it. And if you'd like to talk to me about it, you can always send me an email and I'd be happy to, to go into it further with you. But when you look at the relationship between a man and a woman, and you just kind of separate that from everything else, usually, and I'm talking for the majority of the masses, I'm not talking about those great people out there who have ideal, wonderful, fantastic relationships who found their soulmate and are doing fantastic. Well, we need more of you out there because the majority of people really are at war with each other. Man and woman are at war with each other on a lot of different levels. And we see that, as, as you know, and what I've talked about before on the show, is how the, the individual relates to the collective. So what you talk about most of the time is the collective world stage. You know, we have all of these big things happening. And, uh, you know, this country over there, and we're doing all this drone stuff, and right. we have all these crazy things going on. We're at war. Um, well, what does that have to do with a man and a woman? Well, if you look at the energy that's produced from relationships, it's really no different than when you have a country versus another country. We just don't have a cooperative state of being between the majority of people on this planet. And if we did, we would be functioning in a much more healthy way. So why is our planet dysfunctional? Well, I'm going to make the statement that it's based on the relationship between men and women and how they absolutely really, when it comes down to it, do not produce the kind of energy that they should be producing together that is actually available to heal on all levels, all of our levels. And if let's face it, I mean, when we have a healthy relationship in the home, the family is healthier. The family moves out into the world in a healthier, and it ripples outward from there. People go to work, and they have healthier relationships with coworkers and so on and so forth, and it keeps going. I have always written, and I've always talked about the fact that Whatever we believe inside, 
uh, whatever we, whatever fears, whatever psychological or spiritual or emotional or mental uh, states of being that we have, uh, ripple out and create our reality. And I really come from that perspective because it's been not only my own experience, but in all the years that I've been working with my clients on uh, group basis and individual basis, this has been a very consistent theme. It can be psychological. The relationship between a man and a woman is psychological. There's a lot of things that keep the two from divine uh, intervention, <laughs> you know, from really coming together right. uh, and being able to create. Um, now, this is going to get a little esoteric and it's going to get a little energy and I don't, you know, I know your listeners aren't you really used to this kind of talk. No, and, 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 and let, let, let me, let me uh, interject a little bit here because the, the, in, in, for the YouTube audience uh, that's listening to this, you know, the, the introduction that she was talking about was, you know, when, and I want to get into this a little bit because I'm, I'm monitoring the chat right now, and, and obviously there's a lot of jokes, and, and you know what, that, that's fine. I mean, it, it, it is something that when, it, when we first uh, broached the subject, it, it, we automatically go to a place that is... Uh, ha, ha, funny, funny. Ha, right, ha, funny, it's almost funny, yeah. yeah. It's almost as if you know we're back in middle school, right? When we when we uh, or or maybe sixth or, or seventh grade when we started uh, you know having these thoughts about the opposite sex or sex in general, and then it, you know we we automatically revert back to some kind of locker room humor or some kind of oh a taboo thing to talk about, and uh, it, exactly the same thing I thought when you sent me Badgate, uh, <laughs> it, the the link for Badgate. I'm like, yeah. what? Yeah. You know, so, uh, I, look, guys, in the chat room, joke around and, and stuff. That's fine. I mean, I, I, I do the same thing. I've been joking with Hillary before the program, but when, when you listen to her and you read what she's written, I mean, a lot of this makes sense. Now, I, I don't know if I'm going to jump into the, the problems of the world are caused because there's not healthy relationship. <laughs> but no, no, but let, let, me, let, me, let me finish this. I, I, I believe there's other factors. I think there's a lot of uh, greedy individuals on this planet who, you know, who could care less about sex, who could yeah. care less about, you know, uh, heterosexual, homosexual, whatever. They don't care. They're into greed, greed, power. That is their, that is their religion. You know, everything else is secondary. Well, let me talk about, let me address that from a state of consciousness. But, let me say this, let me say this. But, I do believe what you're talking about, health between a man and a woman, regardless of what's going on around the planet, economically, militarily, the, the relationship factor could make your life a whole lot better if you understood how to, you know, how to communicate uh, man to woman. Go ahead. Well, it's true, and you know, I agree with you on that sense, and that it, it definitely does. But see, I disagree in the fact that it doesn't affect us on a collective level because if the majority of people on this planet were in honest, healthy, divinely connected relationships, and when I say divine, I, I mean divine in whatever sense that means to you. I'm not here saying it's got to be one way because when you ask ten different people what divine means to you, you're going to get ten different answers. But I will say this: when the consciousness of man and woman gets saturated with a set of programmed behaviorisms. Uh, they repeat it over and over and they replicate and pro reproduce from that state. At least within a conditioned enslaved mind, this is true. In an imprisoned mind, you know, this kind of understanding is closed off to you. You don't understand, uh, you know, the, what I'm talking about because, it, you know, it just doesn't make sense to what you've been conditioned to believe. And this show is well familiar with what predictive programming. We see it in uh, advertising. We see it in war propaganda. We see it all over across the board. But what makes you think it's any different for your personal life or for how you're supposed to be in relation with another person, especially the opposite sex? When you think about a woman, and let's face it. I mean, you have kind of uh, most people, men and women included, have a kind of idea of what uh, you know, sex, how sexuality plays into it. You have kind of the whore, then you have kind of you know other degrees of archetypes in between. But let's look at this too. We look at the kind of the whore archetype, and we look at the Mother Teresa archetype. Now, one you're going to probably have sex with, right? But you might not respect the other one. You're going to respect, but you might not want to have sex with. Well, the problem with this is that it's been completely divided by organized religion over the course of centuries on purpose. Because why do you think when you look at the Holy Trinity, you have, you know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost has been taken out of the equation because they don't want you to understand that sexual energy is life force. 
and that you go into a whole arena of wait a minute. You know, what is wait a minute uh, say that again the father son and holy ghost they took the holy ghost out of the equation they took the woman out of the oh, equation oh the woman okay okay yeah you can't you can't have a child with a ghost Okay, I, I, I thought you said they took the ghost out of the equation, and I'm, go ahead. Well, maybe I did, but they took the ghost, is, she's taken out of the equation. You don't have the father, the mother, and the son. You have the father, the son, and the Holy Ghost. Well, the Holy Ghost, who do you think she is, right? And then, you know, God forbid you look, literally, the pun intended, you look at a woman in a divine sense without being a mother figure, right? So we've been kind of brainwashed to see women as a either kind of a, you know, this a horror tool. type, a tool, right, you know, just to get your knocks off and then that you go on about your business, or we see her as the divine mother. Well, you know, there's, you kind of take the sexuality out of it right there for most people, you know, and I say that because anybody who, you know, let's face it, incest is a very real thing that goes on on this planet. But when you add that sexuality into that incestuous relationship, you are adding a dysfunctional energy into it. So the mother type, the mother figure, you know, all of this takes the sexuality out of it. And most people don't identify with the fact that, you know, sex can be divine, sex can be holy. Sex can be part of a divine intervention, interaction, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, some people go into the world of Tantra, and of course that, you know, it is very valid for most people, but um, I unfortunately don't like to talk about one modality when it comes to talking about sex and divinity, because this really isn't about knowing a modality or understanding the philosophy of one way of seeing how sex can enlighten and uh, enrich your life and bring you to a state of divinity within yourself and with other people. Um, so I don't label it and I don't really promote Tantra with it because of that reason. So I get a lot of people who practice Tantra and they say, oh, this is just what Tantra does, this is just what Tantra does. But the way that I really want to work with this is the fact that it's between one man and one woman, not a group of people or multiple people. I mean, if you take the time to really deepen and nurture and respect and trust a relationship with a partner, um, then you develop something out of that that partnership, that that uh, um, merging of the two, that is actually uh, opens a stargate. It actually opens up the kundalini energy. It goes up the chakras, and you go up and out. And there's a lot of research that has been done in some of the symbolism involved with, with all of this. And, of course, that will be part of part two that I'll be writing on. So I'm not going to really spend a lot of time getting into that right now. But there's a lot of really solid history uh, based in symbolism throughout all cultures that really shows this. Um, a lot of secret societies understand it. Um, there's a solid understanding of it in the church. They just don't promote it because what do they want? They want a lot of enlightened, fabulous, divine people walking around? No. So, and that's a whole other story. But, um, but the Vag Gate really is about uh, not just honoring the woman, but the woman and the man honoring each other. It's about illuminating each other and really bringing each other to their truest, most fullest potential that they can actualize, realize and actualize within their lifetime. And the quality of that interaction changes everything. And I really believe that it has the power to change the world. Oh, okay. Well, we're about a minute away from the break. And, and that's a great overview but I, I mean, can, on the back side of the break, I, I'd like to uh, to elaborate a little bit more on what is the Vagigate? I mean, what, what are you talking, is this just the the experience between a man and a woman in bed? Is this the, everything in their life? Is this everything in society? I mean, how, uh, you know, how, I, I can't think of anything to say that isn't a complete and utter pun, so I'm not going to say it. I want to get a little <laughs> further uh, into the Vagigate, if you will. <laughs> After the break. We will do that after the break. Hillary Ramo, uh, deep subject. You know, again, that's, that doesn't mean to be a pun, but, uh, you know, th this, obviously, you've uh, spent a lot of time on this, and, and after reading, uh, the, you know, the link that I put in, in the chat room, it, it's very, uh, very detailed, very in-depth, and very interesting, uh, without a doubt. Uh, again, you know, I, I don't know, I, I guess with my limited exposure to, to your study here, to your research, uh, I, 
I don't know if I buy the uh, controlling the world or we can make it a better world uh, overall, but I certainly agree with the fact that we can make it better relationships, we can make better understanding uh, between ourselves, between man and woman. Eight. And we, we listened to Hillary for the first half hour give us uh, a great overview of her work and a great overview of what it is. And I, and I ended uh, the, uh, the first half with, okay, when we come back, I want to talk about, you know, what is vagina gate? I, what is it? What is vag gate? I mean, your explanation, the uh, complexity of sexuality, especially between men and women, or obviously between men and women, but in uh, religion is, uh, is obvious. But what is vagina gate? <laughs> we had such a great conversation over the we break. Did. I wish you guys could all have heard it. It was really good. Um, well, I want to start it off by... Really, really it was really, really ridiculously good. good. It was good. And uh, what we were talking about um, was basically, you know, a little more serious of a conversation because you, this subject, let's face it, brings a lot of programmed responses to it. Um, but the vagina gate really is about where life comes from. I mean, when you conceive life inside, when a life is conceived inside of a woman, uh, you know, the very first human cell, the fusion of that conception creates a very interesting symbol. And if you go to my blog, you'll see it. It's the Verseca Pisces. And you can actually put that into the chat room. It's V-E-S-I-C-A-P-I-S-C-I-S. Make sure you spell it right, Charlie. Oh, you're talking to me? Because you <laughs> yeah. know me. I, I can't even hit the keyboard. Right? Give me the Okay, well, again. forget spell it Charlie. So, okay, V-E-S-I-C-A-P-I-S-C-I-S. So for those of you listening who are on a computer, you might want to Google this because it's a pretty fascinating symbol and you can find it throughout history. Um, you can find it in the universe even. There's a constellation that has it. It's called the eye, the cat's eye. You can find it in all kinds of different ancient cultures. You can also find it in a lot of modern day architecture. Um, it, it's a very powerful symbol. And if you think about it, um, a vagina gate really is about the fact that that form starts to take place through the merging of these two through the fusion of the male and female and what comes through that symbol what comes through the very centered part the it looks like a vagina um, is actually you we've all come through vagina gates we've all been uh, created inside of a vagina gate and we've all come out of it so it's a portal or gateway that we've all experienced in the sense of birth why does nanotechnology why does stem cell research work because you can manipulate the form that comes from that initial merging. You can just, you know, do whatever you want to it to create whatever you want to it. Why? Because it's the basic building blocks of life. It's the basic building blocks of form or manifestation. So when you have a baby or, you know, you, you're moving into that stage of your life and you start to produce life, then, you know, you're looking at a miracle. You know, nobody doubts the miracle of birth. Nobody doubts the miracle of a newborn baby. And, you know, that's a very powerful thing. Um, the vagina gate really has to do with understanding and uh, being responsible with that knowledge and how you talk about it, how you share it, how you deal with it. I mean, everybody who's ever had a very powerful sexual relationship with somebody where you really feel like it's more than just a typical what we've been programmed to believe interaction can be is just, you know, self-gratify yourself. Maybe it'll feel good. Maybe it won't. You know, it, it's not really anything meaningful to it. I mean, it, it doesn't really feed you on any other level except instant physical gratification. Um, you should be feeling an emotional reaction. You should be feeling a spiritual reaction, uh, a mental reaction alongside of a physical reaction. And these kind of things, merging all different aspects of yourself, um, your multidimensional aspects of self, really is about empowering that uh, life form. It's in, about empowering the energy that's created between the two of you. The, the merging of the male and female creates form, creates life. Um, the really, I mean, it just sounds so kind of like, well, so what? I mean, that's just, everybody knows that. Everybody's gone to health class starting in sixth grade. But when you really put the divine uh, back into this, and you start to look at it from a different perspective, you realize we're dealing with a kind of energy that's created between a man and a woman when they reach that level with the kundalini awakening, the orgasm. Some people can't even achieve that. They can't connect to their partners. 
uh, sex is sex. We laugh, you giggle, um, all that, you know, that stuff. That so are you talking about, do. are you talking, I mean, obviously you're talking about the act of sex. And, and, well, and, yeah. yeah. And uh, how, and we've been there, right? We've all been there. You, you know, some are very memorable, some are very forgettable. Uh, but you, you're talking about this this energy when you're with somebody that is uh, um, uh, what's what's what I'm looking for. Were you guys? <laughs> yeah, 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 divine, I guess. But it, it it would be, you know, there's a lot of factors in there. It isn't just uh, physical, right? There's a, there's got to be a connection emotionally. There's got to be a connection. Oh yeah, yeah. Spiritually, I mean, I that's uh, intellectually. Uh, that's the problem. Most people can't find that because. I don't know how. One of the first questions I asked on this particular article was, I, I said, the divine male, how do you find him? Who is he? Is he real? And how is he expressed in each dimension? Let's, I mean, let's take a look at just the the male object of Jesus. You know, he's this figure. He's very, you know, he's religious. A lot of people worship him all over the world. But he's not a physical person, right? So we're not really reaching that level of love with a, a real person, we're reaching that level of love with uh, Deity. an image. Yeah, the the illusion of that. And to be to be honest with you, I mean that does help a lot of people. I'm not trying to piss off a gazillion people, but in, in some ways I am because uh, if you can worship Jesus or any other religious figure of that stature. And you can put all of this energy and love into him. Well, why can't you do that with your partner? Why can't you do that with somebody that's physically in your life also? Why can't you find that spiritual element within him that you can love and, and honor and respect and, and give your prayers to? I mean, what we all know the power of prayer. Why wouldn't we do that for our partners? And well, wait a minute, though, because... Wait a minute, though, because... I mean, there's, we're covering a lot of different. Uh, I know it's a lot of information to cover, and I'm trying. I'm going pretty fast with it, but I'm no, trying no. I, I don't mean the, the, the information. I, I'm talking. We're jumping from different, you know, because I, I, compartmentalizing is what people do, right? And, and if you're gonna, if we're gonna talk religion, you know, the 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 notion that uh, it's the same kind of uh, uh, experience you're gonna have with somebody that you, your soulmate, let's say. Uh, in the bedroom, sexually, you, you're going to experience ecstasy with this person. You know, I don't put that those feelings or the, that thought process in the same category as I do my religion. And you talk yeah, about, you talk I'm about, using it as an example. I'm using okay. it as an example. So okay, the majority of people can take a figure like Jesus and they can give them a tremendous amount of what energy? Right. Would you agree? Love. Yeah. I mean, but but that's love, what I was saying. Yeah. You get into the word, you, then you start talking about love. You know, if you're a Christian and you love you love your God, you love your God with all your heart. I mean, this is kind of almost like an unconditional love, the same that you would have for your children. You know, which is why can't you have it for your partner? You can, you can. I think I think most that, people don't. Most people don't. That relationship okay. is not there. I, I I don't disagree with that. I'm just saying. I'm trying to maybe I maybe this is the problem. I'm sitting here trying to battle you with preaching. <laughs> see, we're at war. Yeah, well, that's no, a, that's a good point, Charlie, yeah. because. Uh, you, we are trained and programmed to compartmentalize, so we can't really take topics and mix them up together like this because, no, that belongs over there, and that belongs over there, and this is separated, and that's separated. It's the beehive mind. We are really, really programmed and trained culturally on all levels for eons that this is the way we should be thinking. And that's why the world is working the way it is, because we are compartmentalizing pretty much all of our life. And when it comes to sex and divinity and trying to figure out the relationship that you have with another person, it's a very complex thing. Uh, it can be a very deep thing. When I talk about creating a divine vagina stargate between two people, it has it, it confuses people on a lot of levels because we're not really prepared to talk about something like this, let alone experience it or bring it out and actualize it. No, I agree with that, and and the compartmentalization, without a doubt, because it, I mean, you're I'm very open minded. I mean, you know, at least in my own opinion, I'm very open minded, um, and immediately I'm trying to compartmentalize these different feelings of these different emotions, be it uh, you know, like I said, unconditional love, love, lust, uh, sex, uh, religion, and it just it's hard to mash it all together mm -hmm. in uh, one ball of understanding. So, you know, I could certainly uh, see resistance that you were up against there. But w let me ask you this. I mean, so all this, all the, the, the vagina stargate, the understanding uh, of this energy that can be 
uh, magnificent. It, is this, this isn't all just sexuality, though. This isn't all just how to have better sex, right? No, it's not. It, what it's about is activating the human technology that you really are. Um, you know, we, we hear a lot of stories about nanotech and microchips and all of these things that are going on in the planet. When you look at some of the mega rituals going on, like, uh, you know, at the Super Bowl, the Olympics coming up, all the symbolism that a lot of people are really familiar with, or at least see and equate with something negative, or the New World Order, or all of this stuff going on, the evil Satanists are going to take over the world. Uh, you have... <laughs> kind of a mis, uh, mix mash of all these different energies going on and people really not uh, seeing what's what's happening. But the nanotech and the biotech and all of these things, uh, the microchips and stuff, are really about upgrading people's consciousness when it comes down to it on a very, 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 very lo high level. Um, you know, when you are implanted with something, what does it do? It interferes with biological, uh, you know, processes and um, there's all kinds of solid research out there that there's technology that really can, you know, screw with your mind. It can right. do all of these different things. We don't sure. have to rehash that. But the point I'm trying to make is that you don't need to do all that with technology. You don't need to raise consciousness or try to uh, get people to get it with technology unless people have just closed down to the point where they're just not able to go any further. Human technology is about using the human body to be able to meditate, to be able to go into different states of consciousness, to be able to, uh, you know, fill in the blank, you know. When you have sex, you are activating your human technology, your body. You are using different systems chemically, uh, biologically, all over the place. You are creating a different kind of chemistry within your body, which activates different areas of your body. So the act of sex, um, when it's actually infused on a multidimensional level with all levels of being within yourself, creates an entirely different state of being. That's why I call it a stargate, because it opens up a level of consciousness that you are not able to access unless you're able to release all your inhibitions and you're able to go into those deeper levels, connect on a deeper level, and be able to produce that quality of connection within the sexual act. All right, I, I get that, and, and that makes complete and total sense to me. I'm trying to draw a parallel to that beautiful thing that you just described there, which is, you know, I, I think uh, very desirable. Who wouldn't want that in a relationship? Now I'm trying to draw a, a parallel to the uh, trials and tribulations of the world. I mean, do you think we could, this is, if we achieve this kind of level of satisfaction between man and woman and got rid of these inhibitions, this would uh, be an enlightening event that would go beyond the bedroom? Well, everything else goes beyond the bedroom, too. So, I mean, I, I believe fully that everything is interconnected. So when you have a dysfunctional world, you can trace it all the way back to, you know, the microcosm. The microcosm and the macrocosm are not separated. They're not parallel. They're circular. So you can't have a higher level of consciousness in the collective world without starting in the microcosm or being able, or, you know, both of them feed each other. But, I mean, if the whole world all of a sudden decided to become, oh, we are all one, we're all enlightened, we're all great. But then when you go back down to their personal lives and they have no money, they have no relationship, they can't function, uh, they can't focus, that's a disconnection. That's not a mirror. When you go into, to, you know, because you, you really can't say that I'm enlightened, uh, that I feel connected with everything, but then when you go home and you go, visit your biological family for Christmas, you, nobody gets along and you end up hating everybody when you leave, right? Mm. It's not separated. It is absolutely 100% connected. The microcosm and the macrocosm are perfect mirrors of each other. So whatever you have going on in your personal life is exactly the same kind of energy that's out in the world, period. Oh. And it's not a parallel thing. You can't compartmentalize it. You can't structure it in a textbook. That is something that is more of a spiritual understanding. It's more of a circular. It's more of a higher level of frequency understanding. And what I mean by that is consciousness. Consciousness is something that we all are. Okay, let me we ask you, and I, don't, I don't mean to jump in and interrupt you. I just looked at the clock. We're, we're flying through the second half. Uh, and, and we've got about five minutes left. Obviously, it's not enough time to get uh, uh, too involved to in-depth, what are you recommending people to do in order to achieve this level of bliss? 
<laughs> or at least at least get on the path to achieve this level of bliss. Uh, get honest with themselves, and you know when they when they look at the word vagina, what's your first reaction? Your first reaction. Or oh, was that a question state, to me? No. Okay. It's a question. It's a hypothetical question to everybody to okay. actually to think about. I mean, when you look at the word vagina or the word period or anything to do with the female anatomy, uh, and your first response is either sarcasm. Uh, joking around is a form of sarcasm sometimes when it comes to this, when you, when you, or you're uncomfortable. Yeah, joking That's around a is without a doubt. Joking yeah. around or the, the sandlot humor, the locker yeah, humor. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a sign that you have some, some programming going on in there that, that is keeping your mind closed. And I would say that would be the first step to take is to get real with yourself and get honest with yourself and take a look at that. And then if you, you may find out some things that you didn't realize before, you might really question some of your beliefs, some of the things, some of your own insecurities. I mean, let's face it, most people don't want to talk about their sexual relationship. Is it good? Is it, in, you know, is it inadequate? Uh, do they have problems connecting? Uh, do they have to fantasize about the uh, 20 minutes of porn they just watched on their computer in order to have an orgasm with their partner? Wait a minute. If, Are you telling me there's porn that lasts 20 minutes on the computer? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. But, I mean, the point is, is that that's, that's where you have to start. You have to start with your own circle of understanding and experiencing this. And you got to be honest. you got to be real. Nobody's going to tell a group of people for the most part anyway, uh, you know, what the reality of their sex life or the reality of how uh, they do or do not feel fulfilled by it. Right. No, so, I, I mean, and listen, during the, break, during, during the break, Hillary and I, and she egged me on to come out here and tell, you know, to, to spill my guts, um, and I'm, I'm not going to, but I, I mean, I'll, I'll allude to it a little bit, but the fact, the fact is, I, you're right. I mean, there's closed off people. And in the United States, uh, it, it is certainly uh, more prevalent, I believe, than, than other parts of the world. I, I lived in Europe for four years. Um, I was uh, a young man when I was uh, there, and I had a an older German uh, girlfriend. And uh, I, after four years of living there and then coming back and just seeing the difference in the uh, in sexuality in general, but in the perception of, of sex or in the inhibitions uh, that seem to be rampant, you know, I came back, it was almost like a culture shock. You know, mm -hmm. I, I had very little experience before I went to, to Europe, and I was only 18 years old when I went there. Uh, and, and then after living there for four years, I came back, and I'm like, well, wait a minute, why am I so far ahead of the curve uh, when, you know, when I land back in the U.S.? It's just, it's a cultural difference. It's a, you're right. It is what we're taught from a very early age. We don't, uh, we giggle about it. We we don't explore. We don't ask questions. I mean, you don't ask questions of your partner. You just, you know, it is an act. You get it done and you move on. And so, I mean, you know, I I think there's a lot of truth in what you're saying about uh, it. Our initial response is to put up a barrier and you know not talk about it. I mean, if anything, this article does, if it just stirs up conversation or, you know, uh, people can get real enough, long enough to really talk about it and really take a look at it and then look through the symbolism, look through the history of how this is really played. I mean, it's incorporated into all of the mega rituals that we see on a large scale. Uh, we talk about the elite. We talk about they, they're very well aware of all of this. This is something that they have not shunned underneath their carpet. They may do it publicly, but this is something that they absolutely understand. They understand the feminine principle, the creative principle, and they understand how important the male principle is to to uh, working with that. And, you know, when you have an experience, you said something very interesting, and I'll make this very quick. I know we're running out of time. But you said something about coming back to the U.S. and feeling like you were, like, ahead of everybody after this experience of yours, and that's because your consciousness was actually pushed ahead. It was quickened. It was actually, um, you know, really just changed. And then you came back to a level of consciousness that was not at the level of consciousness that you were because of that changing experience for you and being able to be honest with yourself and open up yourself and, and deal with that, that opens up your consciousness. Then when you come back, you're slammed because your consciousness is, oh my God, it's on a different level. And then all of a sudden you're around a different frequency, a different vibration, a different level of understanding. Well, there seems to be there seems to be different personalities. Uh, I mean, there, there's people who are just naturally more open, more inquisitive, more open-minded. Uh, that that uh, you know they're not shut down, 
regardless if they you know if they've heard this message or not they're just naturally more uh, in tune with themselves and they're le they don't have the inhibitions of others Mm -hmm. It's conditioning. They don't have the same kind of programming. Maybe they weren't exposed to it. Who knows? At, at some level, any kind of traumatic experience with your sexuality growing up uh, through your teenage years, through all of that stuff too, or any feelings of self, you know, lack of self-confidence can add to it also. Mm. Very interesting stuff, Hillary Ramo. Very interesting indeed. All right, I'm going to put the uh, link into the chat room. What is the, uh, give us your blog uh, address? Uh, it's hillaryramo.blogspot.com. And you can go there and read all about the badge gate you part one. You can go to my anyway. website, actually. Yeah, you can go to my hillaryramo.com and you can find my uh, all my information and everything that I do right there. All right, Hillary, thank you very much. We'll get you back on. Hopefully, uh, in two weeks, we'll see. Thanks, Charlie. Yeah, sure. All Sounds right. good. All right, very okay, good. Okay, good night, everybody. Good night, Hillary. Guys, stay tuned. We're gonna we're gonna bring on uh, Colonel McGregor in about ten minutes. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna totally switch gears here uh, and talk about.